<laughs> that that is a classic example of that was like the OG of misleading yeah, trailers. Yeah, like we talk about how Rogue <laughs> One was so misleading. Rogue from One, a, uh, Avengers: Infinity War, right? Uh, Deadpool, Deadpool Two, Deadpool Two, right? That and was the OG yeah, of misleading trailers for because. Movies. Denzel Washington, not the hero. No, no. They, they they were acting like he was like conflicted with yeah. all of his decisions, like, even though, no, his decisions were very solid from Jump Street. Yeah, right. He knew exactly what he was doing. He wasn't this cop that existed in this world that he needed to be this way. No, he didn't make that rogue decision because it was right and wrong. Right. It was because it was putting millions of dollars right. in his pocket. Right. Like, they're like, <laughs> you made a $3 million score. They don't talk about how... Yeah, but they're going to keep it. Right. <laughs> they're, oh, oh, no, but they're not talking about how the fact that it was originally a $4 million score. Right, right. And a million is getting pocketed by that's them right, that's right. on purpose because that's what they were in there to do, collect a million dollars. Right, exactly. Welcome into that movie show. Hi, everybody. Hello, everybody. Mike Went, Liam Stryker, Bill Neville behind hey, the board. Hello. And we are talking about the 2001 film yeah. Training Day. We are live back in the studio because we, we were so live last week. Were we? <laughs> no, we recorded <laughs> On the Wednesday. two episodes. This is, this is one of the reasons that we're doing Training Day instead of Jurassic Park because I got all fucked up on our timeline. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to peel back that fourth wall there yeah. and be like, okay, I fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was funny because I watched Training Day three times this week and yesterday you're like, aren't we doing Jurassic Park? I'm like... No. Yeah. No. I made every excuse in the book. No, I want to watch all of them in a week. No, I want to do this. Oh. No, I want to do that. Oh. No, no, no. I already I, committed I, to this fucking I shit. I realized that you already committed to training day. <laughs> I sent out the Instagram. I sent out the fucking tweet. Yeah, I was it's like. It's happening. I was like, wait a minute. Wait wait a minute. No, well, whatever. Who cares? Uh, but so we can make it up to you that we're not talking about uh, Jurassic Park, but we right. are talking about Training Day. We're going to reinstitute something that didn't really work when we first started on the <laughs> show, yeah. but we're going to bring it back now that we know you all are watching. We know you all are, w are listening. listening. We're going to open up the wildly mediocre prize closet, yeah. and this week we are giving away a DVD of Training Ooh. Day. Look yeah. at that. And then... What, you know what we're going to give from the mostly mediocre pi uh, prize closet? What is that? Uh, when we watch all six films of Kevin James. I, yes, that is going to be tossed. Then we will give that tossed away. Tossed into the we'll, wildly we'll mediocre it. prize closet. Yes, we will. We'll sign it. It'll be great. The way to win, though, the way, the way to win this uh, DVD of Training Day, share any version any. of this show. Any. It can be the audio version. It can be the Twitter version. It can be the YouTube version. It can be the Facebook version. It can be this Twitch version that's happening it right now. It can be the Twitch version happening right now. The more you share it, the more chances, the more you, chances have. you have to yeah. win. We will obviously announce the winner next week when we come here. And we more from watching just Jurassic Park mm. and watch all of the Jurassic Parks. And that's, that's just it. We will just be fresh off of watching four. Four. Woo! Four, Four Jurassic Park, possibly five. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna get to the theater on that one. I'm it, going to. No, yeah, maybe we'll see. Not yet. Uh, we'll see. But, but yes, I still it, gotta see Incredibles too. Next, next week, it, it actually gives me an excuse because I've owned the all of them. I've, I've owned all four of them. Yeah, you just haven't watched them. I just haven't had a reason to watch anything past two. Yeah. So you have seen one and two before? I've seen one and two. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. From our text the other day, I thought you'd never seen any of no, them. You no, no, just no, never no. literally opened the DVD. No, no, no. I, I, I've, I've seen one. Okay. I, I actually kind of enjoyed one. Uh, and I've seen two. Eh. And then it was like, I, I have no interest. Three like, is not good. I didn't yeah. like two enough to, to watch get, three. To open up three, even though I own it. Right. And I still own Jurassic World, the one that came out a couple years ago that with, one's with, good. Uh, with Star Lord. Yep. Yeah. That one's good. I still haven't watched it. I own it. Yeah. Still haven't watched it. But because Jurassic World 2 Lost Kingdom Fallen, Fallen Kingdom. Christ is coming well, into sure. theaters sure, sure, sure. this week, we're going to cover it next week. Yeah, great. So that we can cover all, all of, them. of them. So we don't have to jump back at any point right. and do this again. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. <laughs> when the sixth one comes out. But what more importantly, Share this show. Share the training, training day, day episode and get yourself a training day DVD. And it's 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 a stack pack DVD. We got behind the scenes. We got commentary tracks. We got music videos. We got trailers. We got all kinds of stuff. Share this in any form. But what you got to yeah. do? Tell your friends. 
is tag us. Yeah, tag me. Okay. At Mike Went, at Liam NAI, at Bill Neville, at hash, New Age Insiders. Hashtag that movie show, at New Age Pop, at New Age Insiders. Tag any one of us, and one yeah, of us yeah. will get it. Yeah. And it all gets put into one big uh, tumbler. I was going to say cesspool, but but, but one big pot, one big hat, if you will. One big pot. And we will pull that share out of a hat. Mm. Yeah. Out out of a hat. Oh, God. Out of Mike's hat. Yeah. And we will then do. Give you give you give this you training, training day. day, and if you DVD. ask, we'll sign it. We we will, or we'll sign something else so we don't mess up your DVD. Yeah, whichever one you want. There you go. Uh, the reason we're doing training day, we actually put no it out. promises. I'll sign it as me. I might sign it as somebody else. There you go. You might sign it as Liam. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. Um, so the reason we're doing training day this week is because we put it out to you on Twitter yeah. and on Instagram. And fun fact, yeah, sexy beast won on Instagram. Really? It did. Training day overall. Yeah, all got, of them got more votes between Twitter and between yeah. Instagram. Sexy Beast uh, won on Instagram, but Training Day won overall. All right, so we'll have to come back to Sexy Beast. So we're gonna have to come back to Sexy Beast. Funny fact about this: uh, Sexy Beast came out the same year, and Ethan Hawke, who of course plays Jake Hoyt in Training Day, yeah, was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Ben Kingsley, Don Logan in Sexy Beast was also nominated that same year. Yeah. Neither one of them won. No. Despite the wow. fact that both of them should have. Yeah. Over. I've never seen Sexy Beast. Now, have. Okay, well, have you seen Iris? No, I didn't see Iris. Because either. Jim Broadbent won for Iris that year. Weird. This is one of one of those years. We, we talked about it. Uh, you can go back in the archives to our Get, Get Out uh, episode and, and <laughs> listen to us talk about the fact that while Shape of Water won Best Picture, yeah. five years from now, Everyone will be talking about what beat get you know, out. Right. Um, here's That's another, this year. Here's another example because they won't give it to uh, yeah, Avengers: Infinity War. Mm. But what was the best picture mm. from 2018? Oh, well, we have a long way to go. I'm going with Solo, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but 2001 was definitely one of those years that. Um, it was a year of snubs, in my opinion. Right. Um, as, as I just mentioned, in supporting actor category, Jim Broadbent won for Iris. Uh, he beat Ethan Hawke from Training Day, Ben Kingsley from Sexy Beast, Ian McKellen from Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring, and John Voight for Ali. Okay. Okay. So that's one snub. The fact that Antoine Fuqua and the movie Training Day were not even fucking nominated for Best Picture or Best Director gigantic snub yeah uh beautiful mind and ron howard who directed beautiful mind won. okay those years uh the other movies for best picture for 2001 gosford park in the bedroom lord of the rings fellowship of the ring and moulin rouge okay okay i'm gonna, I'm gonna read it again a beautiful mind one yep gosford park in the bedroom the lord of the rings the fellowship of the ring and moulin rouge yeah. And then Training Day yes. was not nominated. Um, this Training is, Day was right, not nominated. Right. And this goes back to when... Uh, I'm not saying you should have won, but nominated? Right, nominated. This is... Uh, Moulin fucking Rouge? Yeah. I, it, it's just, it's frustrating when you talk about... Boss the, Lorman? <laughs> yeah, Boss Lorman. Uh, yeah, because you look at it and it's like, yeah, nobody saw In the Bedroom. Nobody saw Gosford Park. Nope. No, you know, people nope. saw... A Beautiful Mind, Lord of the Rings, and Moulin Rouge. So I have a whole sub podcast about how Lord of the Rings got so many Oscar nominations, yet Star Wars didn't. Right. Like, oh. how, how is this the same Academy that wouldn't nominate Star, Star Wars. Wars? And I mean the original Star Wars for well, for Best Picture. Yet, well, this is my this is my issue with it. Doesn't matter what wins Best Picture at the Oscars next year. Mm-hmm. The best movie of the year was Avengers: Infinity War. It I agree made, 100%. It made the most money. Yep. Everybody saw it, and everybody loved it. It has crossed $2 billion. Yeah. B, with a B. B, yeah. b, b billion yep. dollars. Uh, best Director, Ron Howard won for A Beautiful Mind. Yeah. Uh, nominees, Ridley Scott, Black Hawk Down. Okay. Oh, Robert Altman. Also Ethan Hawke. Robert Altman, Gosford Park. Yeah. Eh, it's Altman. He's going to get nominated. Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. Eh. David Lynch, Mulholland Drive. Yeah. Not Antoine Fuqua, Training Day. Yeah, a Gosford Park. Now, granted, Antoine Fuqua, this was his third movie. 
Right. But again, uh, you know, Robert Altman didn't need it. Gosford Park isn't good. You, I mean, great. And I feel it's it's one of those things that because they have it's a very by name recognition powerhouse best director category. Right. David yeah. Lynch, Peter Jackson, Robert Altman, Ridley Scott, Ron Howard. Yeah. You can't take anything away from what they've done in their careers. Right. But Training Day. Oh well, the thing over is, Gosford Park or Mulholland Drive. Right. Is 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 just at least for nomination sake. Me, I got. I'm going. I forget Mulholland Drive, so I'm gonna have to take a look at that right now. To it make was sure. good. Yeah, I, I just want to make. It sure. wasn't Training Day. Like, they're I, the like same. I said, they're I, the same movie. Is that they're like? No, they're no, not no, cops. No, no, no they're no, not no, cops. No, okay, no, I'm no, thinking no. of. L.A. Confidential. Here's, here's L.A. Confidential. That's what, excellent. That's what I'm thinking about. Uh, L.A. Confidential actually on the Instagram was up against Training Day. Fun fact: Mahal and Drive going to be at the Brattle Theater tomorrow. Well, there you go. So we can watch it. There we go. Um, but yeah, I'm just looking at these movies and I'm like, I watched Training Day three times this week in yeah. preparation for this show, and I could watch it a fourth time tomorrow. Right. It's, it's very good. Such a good movie. Denzel Washington. Not only was nominated, but did win right. Best Actor. He beat Russell Crowe for Beautiful Mind, Sean Penn for I Am Sam, Will Smith for Ali, and Tom Wilkinson for In the Bedroom. In the Bedroom was like, I don't know. I haven't seen it. No. I haven't seen it, so I can't no. really speak to it, but it seems like that indie darling type of movie. Yeah. I, am I wrong? Yeah, I, I don't no, know anything sounds, about it. Yeah, it sounds exactly. I, I don't even know what it is. In the it's Bedroom. It's just I wanted to get that out of the way right off the jump, how how egregious the the fucking yeah, academy awards were sure. that year uh <laughs> training day was released september 2nd 2001 it uh had a budget of 45 million came in at one 104 104 million 104 and a half excuse me 104 and a half million dollars yeah i was trying to get fancy about wording it's very interesting it I was uh directed by antoine fuqua written by david Ayer. And starring Denzel Washington, Ethan Hawke, Ava Mendes, Scott Glenn, Cliff Curtis, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg. So many we will get into Dr. Dre a little bit later on. Uh, but such a good, good movie. Not not only uh, a we, of, we it's one of those time capsule movies. Right. We talked about last week with Ocean's Eleven mm. how that mo- the – oh, two weeks ago. That's right. We talked about it two weeks ago. But – the the Ocean's Eleven movie with George Clooney is such a well put together film. Yeah, and this is another example of a very well put together film. Yes, everything has a purpose. Everything means something. Yeah, and everything pays off. Yes, and yeah, I mean this is just a top to bottom great movie. It is a fantastic movie, uh, in my opinion, and and I feel I don't feel like I'm going out too far on a limb by saying. By asking, I guess, is Denzel Washington the most beloved actor in the world? Uh, Tom Hanks. Okay, I'm glad you said that. See, we didn't prepare this. Yeah, right. Okay, right, right, right. I didn't. I didn't set Liam up for this question, but I'm glad you said that because there is an ongoing debate, right, <laughs> between excuse you, between <laughs> Denzel Washington and Tom Hanks and their '90s careers. Yeah. Also, subcategory. Also, Neil Patrick Harris. Subcategory. Because he's a delight. Those two trading roles. Right. Like, could... So... Would, so, would you watch Castaway with Denzel Washington? I think I would. The thing is, is that Tom Hanks is more versatile because Denzel Washington, he, while very good in everything that he does... Because I'm going to sit here and say Tom Hanks had a better 90s. Right. But I think overall, Denzel Washington is a better actor. See, the thing is, is it, I guess it it comes down to versatility for me. Mm-hmm. Because Denzel Washington has never put himself out there to do something like Bachelor Party or The Burbs or Big. And you, so You say that. Uh, you say that. But Denzel Washington did Ricochet with Ice-T and John Lithgow. Yeah, but at the- he didn't do the comedy, the slapstick comedy, right? But he did do the the schlocky genre shit, right? But at he the- did Devil with a Blue Dress. He did Mo Better Blues, right? You know? But at the same time, he's still kind of the same. Is he? Yeah, because he plays stoic Denzel Washington. Does he? Yeah, like it, it's in the same way. I mean, I, I think you're, I think you're too, uh, too modern for lack of a better term. Because yes, I'll agree. Since Training Day, Denzel has been playing Alonzo. 
Yeah, right. Okay. Well, and- the Equalizer is Alonzo. Taking Poem 1 through 3 is Alonzo. You know, right. Man on Fire is Alonzo. Deja Vu is Alonzo. Yeah. American Gangster is Alonzo. Right. But, but, but even let me still. Let scroll down his But IMDb. even still, it's like you look at Malcolm X. That's not Alonzo. Yeah, but it's st- but again, I'm he I'm did saying three it's three generations stoic. of one character. It's stoic. Okay. Uh, like that's why he's not like you look at Tom Hanks and Tom Hanks he does comedy, he does lighthearted things, he does things like um he takes a step back and is the music producer in that thing you do. He's, so he did the whole movie. He, directed, well, he did, he he did do the whole it, movie. But it, yeah. but you know what I mean? And so while Denzel Washington is maybe a better dramatic actor, mm-hmm. Because I will give you that. I think that Denzel Washington is a better dramatic actor than Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks is more versatile. So in my book, as somebody who directs stuff, that's more valuable to me. I mean, he did 138 episodes of St. Elsewhere. Denzel. I mean, so that's like soap opera shit. So, you you know, it's not hard to say, okay, he's a better dramatic actor. Right. Um, I'm I'm just saying, like, as far as, like, run out and see this movie. Right. If you had two movies, okay, you got two movie posters. You walk into right. a theater, two movie posters. One has Denzel, one has Tom Hanks. Very little, almost like the flight poster, okay? Right. Nothing explaining it. It's just Denzel being fucking Denzel. Right. Okay? Or Tom Hanks being Tom Hanks. See, and again- Which one are you dropping $20 on? And again, the question boils down to- I. I know what I'm getting into with the Denzel Washington movie. Right. I don't necessarily know what I'm getting into with the Tom okay. Hanks movie. Okay. Right? Because it could be a castaway. Because while I feel, and again, I'll, I'll reiterate that I feel that uh, Tom Hanks in the 90s crushed it. Right. Absolutely crushed it. I mean, he, he was he was as versatile as you can be. I mean, he, he was doing Apollo 13. He did Toy yeah. Story. That thing you do. You've got mail. He did Sleep Us in Seattle. He did, you know, Castaway was 2000, so we'll say he wrapped it up there. Green Mile. You know, you've got mail. So he was right. like romantic comedy, drama, you know, yeah. the, one of the most influential animated movies of all time. Right. You know, that, that shit. Okay. But it's like, and then he goes. But post-training day. I think Denzel has it locked. I don't know because you look at the Da Vinci Code. That was very yeah. like you look, look at the, that, that. I mean, personal opinions aside, that yeah. right. Um, po- uh, the Polar Express, that's huge. You know, obviously Toy Story three. You know, I and again, yeah, maybe Denzel's had a better career. He's a better dramatic actor, but you, it. I still think like Saving Mr. Banks. He played Walt Disney. I, I you knew, know, I knew you were gonna try to fucking get me on that one. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yes, he did. Um, he inhabited Walt Disney. He did. Disney. He inhabited him. And you look at, you know, Bridge of Spies. Bridge of Spies was very good. Mm-hmm. You know, and so Captain Phillips, I am the captain now. You know, like that movie is great too. Plays an underhanded role. I mean, yeah. Did he do Sully? Yes. And did Denzel Washington do Sully better? Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, I'm not going to tell you that they've all been hits. I just, like I said, to be able to kind of sprinkle in, I'm going to play Walt Disney, who's a very eccentric man, right. but then I'm also going to be Woody, but then I'm also going to be a World War II spy. You know, I just, I think okay. I, the versatility ultimately wins out, but I think that, I do think that Denzel Washington is a better dramatic actor. Okay. You know, he also suffers from that same thing that uh, Al Pacino suffered from, where it's like, yeah, you did this iconic role in Training Day, and now you just got to play Al, the Al same Pacino guy. Al Pacino has been playing Scent of a Woman since, since, since Scent, Scent of, of a Woman. Right. She got a great ass, man. Yeah, right. You know, so, yeah. so you know, that's that's my that's my feeling on it. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Okay. Are we going to get into Training Day now? We can get into Training Day now. Um. So <laughs> uh, uh, let's get into it because uh, I feel that the first uh, I, I feel they op- as fu- as great as this movie is as much as I love this movie I feel the opening scene of this movie right could be completely lopped off oh yeah we don't need it and discarded and it would be a much better movie yeah the it really takes a second to s- it's to pick such up. like exposition for exposition sake. well it's like they worked in he's a family man right Ethan Hawke by the way. Yeah. They worked in he's a family man. He's got a wife. He's got a new baby girl. They worked in his fucking football reference for Scott Glenn l- later. It's right. just like the first day of training camp at football. Blah, 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 yeah, blah. right. It's like, and I'm watching it like, 
this was shot after the movie. This was yeah. This was like test screen type. Let's add this shit. Yeah. In. Well, because of the thing that happens towards the climax of the film, we need to establish his family because because he comes home to him. He comes home. To it him. didn't. It didn't work. The fact that he said he has a has a wife forty times in the fucking movie. Yeah. He says it in the first scene right. of the movie. He says it in the car. He says it when he's getting held up by the gangsters in fucking South Central. Right. You know, it's like he says, "I, I right. have a daughter. And, I have a wife. I have a daughter. I have a right, wife." Right. We get Get it, dude. He, they I made know. him take his wedding ring off. <laughs> right. Oh, know? I, oh, I know. We didn't need to see the most wife. Movie going, most of the movie-going audience is stupid. And I guess. That's why. They need I, to be spoon-fed, something like that. All right. So uh, so Jake Hoyt. Yep. Jake Hoyt, who uh, apparently was a beat cop before right. this. Yeah, just gets um, promoted, I guess. I guess. he Well, he applied, apparently. He signed, yeah. he signed up for this special unit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, See, it's weird because if you had to apply to be in this unit, it's weird that you wouldn't know a lot of this stuff going in. Well, also, well, that that's there's one way to look at it, and there's another. Um, we know that, right? Because we're watching the movie, right? Um, but this also came out around the same time as as TV shows like The Shield. Oh yeah, movies like Dark Blue with Kurt Russell. Yeah. You know. And those special and PD blue, those special investigation units were very tight knit groups that right. the rest of the squad had rumors mm. and innuendo about, but they never really knew. It's like, oh well, they they you know they yeah, make, right. they make the big cases. I I've heard they're shady as fuck, but I've never seen it. They've right. never actually yeah. been indicted. I guess, yeah, I guess that makes sense. And they yeah. I mean, there's reasons. Can for we also that. just talk about how good the shield is? I love the shield. We, we, okay. Once we set up that movie show on your Patreon thing, we'll do a whole shield thing. I love because, the shield. And we'll and being that I'm friends with him on Facebook, we'll get Chickless on. No. I love Chickless. Yeah. My favorite thing yeah. in the world is how he plays Vic Mackey yeah. at the end of Sons of Anarchy. We'll get Chickless. Oh, uh, I agree 100%. That oh, was totally Vic Mackey. It's totally Vic Mackey. It was he cuz cuz he left the end of the shield, yep. went vigilante, yep. and they're a fucking vigilante motorcycle game. I yeah. I agree. Yes. Oh my yep. god, yeah. I'm so glad somebody else said yeah. that. Oh no. Fuck, I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah, me and my me and my buddy, we watched the end of uh, uh Sons of Anarchy and we were like that's that's Vic Mackey, right? It's not just Chickless playing a trucker. Yeah, no, no, no. no, that's, no. That's, that's Chickless being Vic that's Mackey. That's Vic Mackey. He's on a fucking mission. Yeah, he's going to do to something. To wipe these motherfuckers out. He's going to do something. Absolutely. I, I yeah. Lo- okay, yeah, we're definitely going to do show. Yeah. Um, but, yes, um, to, to the rest of the unit, to the rest of the, the station. They, right, they they're tight-knit. They're very close-lipped. Nobody's going to know. It would so. be more rumor. It would be more, well... They get shit done, right? It's, they, you know, they've been rumored to use nefarious tactics, but they've never been indicted, right? They get shit done, and yeah. there's a reason they've never been indicted, which we find out later in the movie, right? Yes. So they, uh, yeah. So he meets up with uh, Detective Alonzo Harris in the diner. In the diner, and that's where we get the the very lighthearted. Bah, yeah. Oh, can happen that fast. Fun fact about that diner: same diner that Morgan Freeman, Freeman met uh, Gwyneth Paltrow in Seven. Oh yeah, yep. yeah, that's right. Same diner. Yeah, um, and yes, so we we meet in the, uh, the the tell me a story, right? This is a newspaper. Yeah, ninety percent of it is bullshit, yeah. but it entertains me. That's why I'm reading it. My favorite. You thing- you're inter- interrupting me from reading this shit, so you tell me a fucking story, and he tells him the drunk stop story. Right, and the funny part is, is that you I watched a lot of stuff around this because like, I watched Training Day but then I watched things on YouTube and I watched the everything wrong with this oh you okay so CinemaSins CinemaSins right worst CinemaSins ever it is He. Uh, this was when he was finding his voice he yep. hadn't found his voice it, yet I watched I actually watched that it was, probably 10 minutes before I drove here it was very cold I, he didn't have any personality and uh, there was it was all just it was nonsense. Yeah. But my favorite part about that is where it's just like, I'm reading the, uh, this is very interesting. This is the NASDAQ. Yep. <laughs> this is the NASDAQ. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was nonsense. It was the, it was, and I'm yeah. a huge fan of CinemaSins. Listen to Sincast every week. Yeah. Again, but it, it was worse CinemaSins. They hadn't found, they hadn't found their voice yet. It felt very early. It was also only four minutes long. Yeah. They're, most of them are 20. Oh, yeah. They've, they have, like I said, they found their voice mm-hmm. and it's a very different show now. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so he ends up getting into the. This movie is a lot of conversation between the two of the these two guys. I love it. And 
People want to praise Tarantino for the ability to make a conversation interesting. David Ayer. But David Ayer really kind of knocks it out of the park with this. Uh, for those of you looking for more of this this type of David Ayer conversation, especially in the uh, L.A. crime world, I suggest watching the movie uh, End of Day. Okay. Uh, it stars Jill, Jake Gyllenhaal Is that and the, no, that's Michael Pena. Hour. That's 25th Hour, right, where he goes to that was, prison. Uh, 25th Hour was, I Norton. think, Spike Lee. Yeah, Norton. Yeah. yeah. No, this one, uh, End of Day, was Jake Gyllenhaal and Michael Pena. Oh, and End of and Watch? It, end of Watch. Excuse me, yeah, End, end, end of, of Watch. Watch. And it was almost like, a, like for lack of a better term, a found footage film. Right. Where Jake Gyllenhaal's character was like wearing a GoPro the whole time. Yeah. They're, they're L.A. cops. They're beat right. cops. Yeah. And Wow. One of the best endings yeah. to a fucking dramatic movie ever, and I'm I'm not going to spoil it until we do the movie. Yeah, right. Because um, it was excellent. Yeah, and so th- it all kind of lays the groundwork in this film. Yes. Uh, just because Alonzo Harris is showing this guy the ropes, mm-hmm. and he, you know, I-, I talk about this on the New Age Insiders podcast all the time, where the issue and why people aren't connecting with the WWE audience right now okay. is because the wrestlers don't have clear character motivations. They don't know who they are. Right. Denzel Washington knows exactly who Alonzo Harris is. Oh my God. Yeah. And yeah. because he knows who Alonzo Harris is, mm-hmm. he's able with every word and every syllable and every inflection, be able to connect and tell a story. Denzel Washington, uh, we talked about it a couple weeks ago on our Ocean's Elevens podcast, which you can find in our archives, Um As handsome as George Clooney was throughout it, yeah, Denzel Washington is equally as charismatic right. in this one. Correct. Um, I also, watching it a few times, and I pointed out every time I watched it, Denzel Washington uh, spent at least two weeks playing with his guns in the mirror. Yeah, because he just kept he had him, he had him right here right. on 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 his on his hip, and he just kept playing with them, clicking them together, rubbing them together, yeah. doing all this gunplay stuff. And I'm like, this is a man who, first of all, is not a gun owner. Yeah, all oh, right, but is having a lot of fun playing with his guns. Yes, because especially the scene with the crackheads later with the the, the potential rape, yeah. where he's sitting there and he's just he's clicking them together, he's rubbing them, he's pointing the the barrels at each yeah. other like this. Right. I'm like, you wouldn't do that, right? You wouldn't do that. But at all. it looks fun as shit. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. I just and, and, and he did it in the diner, right? Because uh, Jake goes uh, it, when when he finally goes, oh, okay, tell me a story. And Jake's like, all right, let me tell you tell you the story. Uh, me and me and my training officer, he goes to the whole training officer, the liquor license, all that stuff. You know, it was a drunk stop, and he goes, oh well, and he grabs his guns, he's like click 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 click, click banging them together. Right. He's like, let me load my guns, and I'm like, he just loves playing with guns. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he's also tapped out of his mind, and well, there is that. So you get to see that. Uh, yeah, so they end up getting in the car. They end up driving around. You in the office now, baby? Yeah, and so I will say uh, also, uh, and we're we're gonna take a minute on this this episode also, uh, just because each beat of it is so fucking good. Um, the the Dre song. Yeah, the second he revs up the engine of the Monte Carlo. Oh yeah, and that fucking Dre song hits. It's just such that, like I said, that time yeah. capsule of two thousand one yeah. in Los Angeles. We're also going to run so perfectly paired. We're going to run into the same issue that we had with Ocean's Eleven too. Okay, where Dr. Dre is in this movie. Dr. Dre is. So we in live this in a movie. movie. We live in a world where Dr. Dre is a person. You know what though? But he's not playing Dr. Dre, and Snoop isn't playing Snoop. That's right. I know. But we live in a world where Dr. Dre is a real person. Almost, I would wish Dr. Dre was playing Dre because he probably would have done a better job than he did. This fucking character will get to. Oh him yeah, bad. he was bad. We'll get there. Uh, but yeah, so they end up, <laughs> they end up uh, catching some kids that you know are trying to get the reefer. <laughs> yeah. Get the reefer. Yeah. Which felt really, really couple, low. A couple, couple of valley kids in the ghetto yeah. get yeah. buying some fucking laced reefer. Yeah. Uh, which is just nonsensical. Yeah. It's nonsensical. And this is kind of where the movie starts to turn because you want to root for Alonzo Harris up until this point. One of one of my favorite the, Train Day fills one of my favorite genres of movies, and that is the genre of movie much like Avengers Infinity War, much like uh, Payback, yeah, root for the bad guy. Yeah. I always root for the bad guy, and this is one of those movies. Yeah. And so 
you know, you want to root for him because everything that he says comes from a point of view that you at least believe. Mm-hmm. And you want to Because be- he believes it. Because he believes it. Yeah. Right? And so he, the idea behind it, and we end up seeing what ends up happening later, right. but the point that he's trying to prove when he tells Hoyt to smoke the joint. Or, Jake! Yeah. He's got to, he's got to, to do, like, smoke it. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense because we're going to get into a situation where somebody's going to tell you to do the drugs. Right. And if you don't do the drugs, mm-hmm. you're going to get killed. Yeah. That's the world that they live in. That's that's how they live. And it's nuts. It, it's nuts. That whole scene alone. Okay, so, the, so they get the guy, they get the drugs, and they do the whole right. stop and blah, blah, yeah, blah, blah. Yeah, in the middle of the street. And the, yeah, exactly. And they're driving, and he's, uh, he's, he's packing his bowl and hands it to Jake. Jake isn't going to take it. No. Stops in the middle of the road. And Intersection, ha- And yeah. again, this this movie is filled with tons of great just moments. Right. And this is one of them where he's trying to convince Jake to smoke. At the moment, we believe it's just, just shitty pot. weed. Yeah, just pot. Shitty weed. And the guy's laying on the horn, and he just whips his gun out, yeah. points the gun at him, and goes, shut the fuck up. Up. Right. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, you're in the middle of an LA fucking intersection. Right. In a money car. Not a cop you're, car. Yeah, you're in an unmarked police vehicle. And that might not awesome. even that might not even be a police vehicle. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so he ends up smoking it. Yeah. And we find out that finds out that Jake likes to get wit. Yeah, because it's PCP laced. Likes to get wit. Um. Which, Sherm. which now it seems like, oh no, this is this is going to take a turn. He's fucking with him. He is. He is fucking with him. You still believe that that um, he's fucking with him for the better good. Right. It feels because like... Because we're heading to Roger's place for the first time. Right. And it feels like that the reason why he's fucking with him is because it's an initiation. It, can yes. you Can you hack it? There is... And, and again, uh, it's very... There, there's a lot of parallels to the shield, much right. because they live in the same world. Right. They, li- <laughs> they, live in that, they live in that dirty cop of L.A. type of world. Right. Where they deal with the same types of people. Right. And uh, and yeah, there, there's that initiation process. So you're like, okay, he's just fucking with them. He's, it's, yeah. It's all good. Yeah. So we get to Roger's house. Roger That's played, right. of course, by Scott Glenn. Yeah. Just an ex-cop. So- and now he's a drug dealer. <laughs> Sitting in his uh, in a black tank top, yeah, tucked into jeans, yep, and a green bathrobe. Yeah, it's weird. The fuck. Yeah, it's and weird. apparently has all the knowledge on uh, L.A. North Hollywood high school football. Yeah, love it. It's weird. Love but it. It's okay. How is this guy not sitting down with Chris Hansen for some lemonade? Yeah, I know. It's weird. I know all the good players. Yeah, of course you do. Strong safety, North Hollywood, right? Yeah, Jake Hoyt. Fuck. What? And I lo- and but again, that's weird. I loved Denzel's reaction because Jake Hoyt, who's high as fuck, yeah, is trying to wrangle his way around some scotch. Yeah, he's, he's, he's trying to hold his shit there, together. He's sitting there trying to just maintain. And Denzel's like, "How the fuck did you know that?" <laughs> yeah, right. I follow all the good players. Yeah. Ooh, creepy. Why? Very, very <laughs> creepy. Uh, and then probably the most important plot point of this movie mm. is uh, the breakup of the attempted rape. Yes. Um, so after they spend their time with Roger, uh, they're driving around, and uh, Jake is is fading in and out of consciousness. Yeah, he is <laughs> also played very well in that Dave Chappelle uh, sketch. Yeah, with uh, 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 Wayne Brady. Wayne Brady. All right. Oh. Wayne Brady gonna have to choke a bitch. Yeah. Oh shit! It's Wayne Brady, son. Um. One of the things I, I I really picked out about this is uh, it's one of one of always been one of my fears as an actor is ever having to use contact lenses. Okay, uh, because you can see clearly uh, Ethan Hawke has the dilated pupil contacts in. No, oh, yeah, almost, almost half the movie. Yeah, because he's high as hell. and I'm much like, oh, I hate contact lenses. Yeah, that's brutal. I hate contact lenses, and oh my god, I would hate to have to do that. Yeah, that'd be brutal. Um. But yeah, he he sees he sees something. Right. And so he goes to investigate and it's a girl who's supposed to be 14. Uh all right. Yeah, who is clearly not 14. I mean, I checked her IMDb. She was 8 years older than that when she made the movie. Right. But yeah, let's go with it. Yeah, she's supposed to be 14. Something in the water in southern LA. Yeah. And so he ends up 
saving her, but she runs off, and he ends up finding her wallet. This this was the scene I was referring to where Denzel really yeah. plays with his guns. He oh, really yeah. clicks his guns around. Yeah. They beat the shit out of two crackheads. Denzel stabs one of them in the nuts. Yeah, that's and, right. Um, and, 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 yeah, they, they let the girl go. Uh, they let everybody go, actually, because it's uh, it's where we hit the first for the first time. Uh, you want to go to jail? You want to go home? Yeah, right. So that's another learning lesson for Jake, where it's like, OK, so we're not arresting anybody today. Right. What's what are we doing? But on the way out? Yeah. He, you know, foreshadowing picks up a wallet. Right. OK. Picks so, up a Hello Kitty type of Velcro wallet. Yeah. 14 year old girl wallet. There you go. That's the only reason she's 14 is because she's carrying that fucking wallet around. Yeah, right. Uh, so they get in the car. Jake's all kinds of pissed off. He's like, what, what the yeah. fuck? We're not, we're not bringing them back? And he's like, no. He's like, we don't make these types of busts. We yeah. make big. And that's when he starts explaining the big collar bus. They right. build jails because of me. That whole, the, basically a trailer scene. Right. He, yeah. He's... This is the trailer scene where Alonzo is selling himself to Jake. Right. I'm the guy that gets the, de- like, gets the guy that's bringing in the drugs. Right. I don't get the guy that's selling the drugs. Right. I'm not, I'm not arresting crackheads on fucking possession. Yeah, I don't care. I'll take their shit. I'll take their $60 and right. their bag of crack. But I'm not here for that. I'm here to get the guy that supplied them. Mm-hmm. You know, so, yeah, they end up they end up going to find Blue, who's played by Snoop Doggy Dog. Okay. Um, this, to me, uh, Snoop Dogg should have been a hell of a lot worse than he was. Yeah. Snoop Dogg was excellent in Yeah, this. he was very good. He was surprisingly good. Snoop Dogg uh, in a wheelchair... Yeah, as a crack dealer, which in Training Day in two thousand one should have been a cinematic nightmare. Oh yeah, but it really fucking worked yeah. on every level. Oh he yeah, sold it. He he looked like he came prepared. It was really well done. Right, and so yeah, they end up they end up basically finding crack. Well, because he's a crack dealer, they they make him vomit it. Yeah, right. They he, pen in the throat him. Oh, yeah, that's right. They do, oh, God. Yeah, yep. that's right. Yep. Oh. Yep. Uh, and, yeah. They do that. They do that because this is there's just no moral compass. Because, yeah, exactly. And because I don't even necessarily remember what. They're in the get shit done business. Right. And I forget the reason why they needed something from him because they didn't care about the crack rocks. Right. Was that was it trying to get the name for. Um, the other guy. No, it was Miller? a Sandman. It was a Sandman. It was it was getting that's the right. it was getting the name of Macy Gray's husband. Yes, that's right. So that we could then get to Macy Gray. Yeah, because he's got the he's, he's got, got money. He's got the money, and we want that's what we want. Right. So uh, instead of calling in a warrant, uh, because well, it's just not worth it. We can bypass that with a right. Chinese menu. Yeah. <laughs> throw Jake. Throw a police jacket on Jake Hoyt. Give Macy Gray a Chinese menu, and we're gonna raid her fucking house. Yeah, right. Uh, fun fact about the Macy Gray scene: her son is played by uh, actor Denzel Whitaker. Uh, you'll Denzel Whitaker, okay, in Black Panther. Yep, played young Forrest Whitaker. Okay, and in uh, Great Debaters was directed by Denzel Washington. Okay, and I was actually into Great Debaters okay, and, and heard heard this whole story of how he became Denzel Whitaker. It's obviously a stage name. Yeah. Uh, and I was, I actually talked to his mother on the set. Of course. And it was basically, uh, she felt he looked like Denzel, uh, Forrest Whitaker. Right. But he loved Denzel Washington yeah. and wanted to call himself, De- like as a child actor, yeah, right. wanted to call himself Denzel Washington. She's like, well, eh, you we, can't, we be. can't really do that. And she's like, why don't we call you Denzel? And that whole Denzel Whitaker thing came to be. Uh, that's but fun. that's that actor, and uh, hmm. he's gone on to a, a pretty decent career. Good for him. Pretty decent career. Yeah, yeah good he, for him. He's playing Macy Gray's son in that one. Uh, Macy Gray playing basically Macy Gray. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, but also another fun uh, Alonzo gun scene. Right. Because obviously he steals their money. Right, he steals 40 She flips the fuck out. Yeah, of course. She you Tells no all cop. the gangbangers, hey, they're not cops, they're jacking me, shoot these motherfuckers. Yep. First time and only time in the movie that the car doesn't start. Yeah, right. Do. Of course, as you do. As you do. And uh, so the gangsters start popping off on the back windshield. Right. And Denzel just goes all guns, ho, bop, yeah, bop, just bop, starts bop, firing bop. away. My favorite part is when he's getting into the passenger seat and he's shooting with one hand and, like, dances the other one down. It was just, like, again, I'm watching him, like, 
God, he loved playing with those fucking guns. Yeah, you're just having far too much fun. <laughs> he was having so far too much, much fun. fun. Far too much. Uh, yeah, so we end up going to Alonzo's mistress's house. Ava Mendez. Ava Mendez. The beautiful Ava Mendez. And so basically that's just kind of important for later. Yep. There's not really any reason. It establishes that. Jake Hoyt's relationship with his son. Right. Because they fall asleep watching cartoons together, eating uh, That's right. food. That's right. Because he's still high as hell. Yeah. And so this is also kind of... <laughs> this is also where we kind of find... Uh, oh, and this is the next day. The next day we find them... Oh, it's all one day? Oh, it's all one day. That's right. He only fell asleep for like an hour. Yeah. and so It was, they, it was only while, while Alonzo was banging her out. That's right. That's what he's doing. He's passed out. Watching cartoons. Yeah, he's watching cartoons with the That's kid. Right. Alonzo's getting him getting his dick wet. Yeah, right. And so then we end up going to meet the other high ranking. Jake police. got wet. Yeah, Alonzo's, Alonzo's getting his dick wet. <laughs> right. Very different. Very very different. He goes to meet the three wise men. Yeah, and basically they're just a bunch of corrupt cops. They are, but they're played by phenomenal actors. We got Tom Berenger, Harris Yulin, and Raymond J. Barry playing the three wise men. Right. I mean, they are. It's it's. I mean, Tom Berenger is Tom Berenger, but the other two are like a hundred percent stereotypical that guys. Right. It's that right. guy. It's that guy. You know, yeah. ha- Harris Euling is like the lieutenant in every bad cop movie right. ever. And so that's when we're introduced to the fact that the Russian mob is after Alonzo. Yeah, a weird subplot that I might want a uh, ten episode Netflix prequel up for. Right. Now, <laughs> now, is this where we find out that he's got to pay him before midnight? Yes. And s- um, no, that's what Smiley. That's okay. what that's what Smiley in the poker game. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's where we get the time frame. Right. We we get the whole story. We get the fact that Alonzo is in some shit. Right. But Alonzo's kind of downplaying it as you do because right. he, he's like he doesn't want to show his he doesn't want to show his ass to the people who are in charge. Right. And so they end up because trading- they're basically saying we can't even we can't, can't do- protect you on this one. Right. And so. Basically, they trade the money that they got from Sandman's house for a real Warren. arrest warrant. Yes. And that's going to get them into... Roger. Uh, ro- yes. Scott Clem. Yeah. And that's how they're going to get that into the money to make the $4 million. Correct. And, or the $3 million. They're going to get that yes. score. Yes. Yeah, so they end up heading back to uh, Roger's house, and they're going to go seize the $4 million that he has. And, yeah, they just... His crew him. is uh, assembled... Yeah, the the whole team, and it's filled with again, much like the three wise men. Aside from Doctor Dre, his crew is a crew of that guys. Yeah, uh, we have Billy Bedlin from Con Air. Yep, we have Zed from Pulp Fiction. Yep, and we have I don't know what the hell his name was, but from Nash Bridges, and basically playing the Nash Bridges character, only he's allowed to say fuck in this movie. Yeah. The same suit, same glasses, same fucking deal. Uh, yeah, it's completely the Nash Bridges guy. I'm, I'm going to pull his, I, I think it's this guy here. Hmm. Uh, two seconds. One. Okay. Yeah, Jamie Jamie Gomez uh, was the actor, and uh, he play, He was in Nash Bridges with uh, Don Johnson and Cheech Marin. He played Evan Cortez in that. It's basically the same fucking character. Right. But it also came out at the same fucking time. So it was like, okay, there you go. And now we can finally talk about Dr. Dre. Yeah. The most miscast known celebrity possibly in the history of film. Yeah. He was. He was horrible. Yeah, he was bad. Horrible. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't great. Uh, they would have been better wooden. off just having him play Doctor Dre somewhere in the movie, right? Or just not say anything. You know, <laughs> j- just yeah. You know, don't he say- couldn't deliver a line to save his fucking life. Yeah. So that's oh, Doctor Dre. He sucked. <laughs> that's Doctor Dre. That's all the thoughts I got on him. Um, it was just bad. It was bad. We didn't need him. Doctor Dre playing Paul. Yeah. Paul, yeah. the bad actor. <laughs> yeah, Paul, the bad actor. So basically, they, uh, you know, we find out that they're going to steal the million dollars. They're going to pocket it and give up the. They're going to pocket it and give up three million to the LAPD. Uh, Jake yeah. is Roger the, has four million hidden in his floor. Right. They saw up his floor. Yep. They take it. They take the four million, pocket a million for themselves. Right. Mostly for Alonzo, so we can get out of the Russian deal. But everybody's yeah. everybody's getting their cut. Right. Jake 
refuses his cut. Right, because he's altruistic. Which then makes everybody weary. Well, I wouldn't even say he's altru- altruistic. I, he's just so... I, I feel anybody... I would say 98% of people would have a hard time dealing with this first day on the job. Right. Yeah. Like, this would be a shock to a lot of people. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're right. I have very little morals, and I might have a, a shock on a lot of this shit. Right. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. Like, yeah. I, 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 like, uh, what part are you testing me? Right. Should and, I take a shot? Not take a shot. Say no. I, I, I don't. Know. You just shot Zed in the gut. Yeah. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? Yeah. They end up having a Mexican standoff about it, and that's where we find out that Lonzo's like they murder Roger. Yeah, they murdered Roger. But they're like, hey, you know, you're gonna do a blood test, and the blood test is gonna come back that you have PCP in your system. Best, yeah, and and, and one of Alonzo's best lines is uh, when when he ex- starts ex- he starts exposing what he's been thinking to to Jake, <laughs> right? And he and as you said, he's like, you you've been smoking PCP all day. You got five decorated officers in this room who says you shot this motherfucker, right? You're the you're the shooter. Do you you know? Yeah, which one do you want? Do be? you want your blood to make it, or do you not want it to make yeah, it? Yeah, because I can make that. And happen. he says you've been thinking about this all day, and Alonzo just re- snaps right back to him. I've been thinking about it all week. Yeah, that at that moment you're like. God damn, this guy's yeah really methodical, right? Really methodical, right. and that's also where we end up finding that you know he's going to have Smiley kill him. You know, I think in that moment that's where he's like, yeah. Well, because he and the funny thing was, and I didn't realize this until actually the last time I, I watched it earlier today. He takes Jake's cut of the money and gives it to Smiley, right? Because Jake doesn't take his cut no. of the money, so he takes it. Stuffs it in the blender, and you see Smiley take it out of the blender later. Right. Yeah. So we end up uh, heading to Smiley to, to the barrio. Yeah. yeah. With and, the with Sm- Smiley and the boys. Right. And th- basically, they're playing poker. We find out that the Russians are going to kill him by midnight if he doesn't pay them a million dollars for killing one of the people in Los Angeles. That's where we find out. Did you ever your ship pushed him? Yeah, that's the it's the most insane thing. That, Give me a ship push that guy that just flexes. <laughs> he was he was so fantastic. Raymond Raymond Cruz is the actor. Uh he plays sniper in this. Uh it was Yeah. He it was just... one of the most insane things. And uh I was gonna get into all the trivia and fun facts at the end, but this this uh poker scene needs to be talked about for a second because Antoine Fuqua Talk to you know Raymond Cruz and Smiley and the other right. guy, and basically told them, just fuck with him, right? So that uh, Ethan Hawke w- thought they were just playing poker, right? But they kept changing the rules. That's why Raymond Cruz was so adamant that he won the game okay. with the two pair. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Ethan Hawke's like, I got, I got three of a kind. And he was so he's like, no, f-. it wasn't that he was an idiot, right? It was that he was. <laughs> fucking with him right yeah and they were all fucking with him and then he takes right. his gun right and so he realizes that alonzo's left oh yeah and oh. He... <laughs> there's there's one of those moments it's like you can see it even in his face and this is a credit to ethan hawk as an actor where it's like all right they're fucking with me yeah all right they're asking me if i got my shit pushed in okay fine all right they t- they take my gun but i already have the bullets off to the side okay fine yeah okay they told me that alonzo left oh okay fine right yeah what next <laughs> yeah, right so they end... that what next moment right. and all of a sudden it just shit boils down to right. i'm getting dragged through a shitty apartment right with handcuffs on and being put in a fucking bath because they're just gonna murder me yeah <laughs> at what point you just like i like i would have just given up on life i would have yeah. probably fainted right i was oh, just yeah. like you know what this is it. I'm going out. Can I have that beer, please? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm out. Bye. But he Goodbye. stayed with it. Yeah. And so the deus ex machina is they want to steal them. They, he wants to take his cash before they blow his head off. Of course. Because they, I guess I assume they don't want to deal with the blood on, on the cash. Why would you? Right. And that's if you, if you have him shackled up and, and right. head first in a fucking bathtub, at least get his wallet. Right. And so. His wallet ends up being. The girl's wallet from the beginning. Who? who ends up being the girl from uh, the it beginning. It ends up being Smiley's, Smiley's cousin. Cousin. Smiley, the guy holding the shotgun to right. his head. Oh, shit. That's your 14. 
14 year old cousin yeah so he gives her a call That's an attractive woman right there. Yeah. <laughs> he gives her a call gets to the bottom of it to prove that his story's right yeah and then basically is like yeah man you saved my niece i'm not um yep. i'm not gonna kill you yep i just want to let you know like i was paid to do this i don't actually hate you again, again it was just like it was one of those things that was so honest he's just like hey you know it's just business right yeah right and he's I'm just like yeah sure Man. Yeah, I, I, I have my clip, please. Yeah, right. A scene that I, I, I every time I watch it, I take a little bit of uh, umbrage with is the very next scene where he's riding the bus. Yeah, and he's just playing with his gun in the open. And he's literally sitting, he's alone on the bus, click, snap, loading the gun. I've been on buses. Yeah. Bus driver wouldn't put up with that shit. No. No, no, no. They would pull over and run the fuck off I've, the bus. I've also been on buses in South Central, and they would not have. No. no. You can't just start loading a gun on a bus yeah, no, no, and no. just keep driving. Yeah, no, no, no. No, 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 no. Uh, so he makes his way to Alonzo's uh, yeah. house, or his mistress's house. Ava Mendez. Ava Mendez. So he tries to get him. He's going to try and like arrest him, I guess, is going to be the plan. Something like that. Something. I don't think he really had a plan. but He knew he had to do something because he's the good guy. Yeah, right. He had to do something, <laughs> and he had to stop Alonzo. Right. So ultimately, there's a scuffle, a car crash. The entire neighborhood comes out. That's where we get the King Kong ain't got shit on me speech, which is great. Uh, fun fact, uh, one of the extras was Terry Crews. Oh, cool. That's very fun. He was the guy fl- fl- pigeons. Yeah, okay. You know. Uh, also, the extras actually were... Uh, if you watch the movie, the extras look like gang members because they are. Yeah. Um, the the guy, the lead the lead guy who hands the gun and is like, you got to put in work yourself at in this whole scene yeah, here. Right. Uh, play Bone in the movie. Uh, he's actually... He's an ex-blood. He's one of the activists. But all of these guys were actually... Right. L.A. Bloods. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Antoine Fuqua was really trying to have that authentic feel, the neighborhood, right. yeah, yeah, the yeah. people, the whole deal. Uh, and yeah, I mean the the confrontation between Jake and Alonzo, they they you know they go rooftop to rooftop, pigeon to pigeon. Yeah. All of a sudden, yeah. The, the the whole the whole scene uh, with the the car. But yeah, the. I- I always thought it was weird that you shot me in the ass. Yeah, I just thought it was weird that the this neighborhood doesn't kill him. Doesn't kill Alonzo. Like I felt like that was the moment we were getting to. I don't feel they needed to. No, but it felt like this guy had been terrorizing. Well, they, well, he really hasn't. No, yeah. they, they they had had enough of him. But also, it was a, for lack of a better term, a work relationship. Right. Um, where even even when the first time they come down, and the first time he walks past Bone, he's like, I'm so sick of this motherfucker. Yeah, right. But he, at that very moment, he is Alonzo Harris. Yeah, right. He can bring the hammer of God down on right. you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, it's it's a work relationship where right. you, you, you play ball with them because he right. plays ball with you. Yeah. And as long as you're all cool, we're cool. Right. And you know, so we don't now, have to like each other. But in this situation, this was their opportunity to, right. be, to be rid of him. Yeah. And so Ethan Hawke steals the money and By the way, takes can we talk off. about a shoe program? <laughs> yeah. Like that whole speech. Oh, was, yeah. It was phenomenal. Uh, King Kong ain't got That's shit on me. Movie. Completely improvised by Denzel yeah. Washington. Yeah, great job. Uh, you know, just yelling. I, I still, I love, I, you know, I can't obviously finish it in 2018, but shoe program. Yeah. Shoe program, motherfucker. Yeah, right. Oh, my God. This whole thing, just him, this, watching this scene. Okay, there's, there's actors uh, much like Denzel Washington that when you watch scenes like this you're you just watch it be like that's why you're denzel washington right, right. um i i look and it, it's the silliest of silly movies uh but the expendables three okay three by yeah. the way the yeah. third in this silly yeah. series i don't think i saw that one but they have mel gibson in it and i i've gone on many records as saying that mel gibson if i have to pick a favorite actor it's mel gibson sure um especially later years mel gibson there's a scene in this movie where they have him captured and he's doing a monologue for about two minutes 
and it's just I'm captivated. Like I watch that scene on YouTube on loop. Yeah, okay. Because it's just like that's why you're fucking Mel Gibson. You know sure. I mean? This was that scene for Denzel Washington. Yeah, right. Him delivering this entire speech. speech. Right. Punctuated by King Kong ain't got shit on me, which was fucking improvised by yeah, it was him. Great. It was great. Is it's why an, he's uh, Denzel Washington. And it's an iconic movie line. But yeah. uh, but Hoyt takes the, the money, mm-hmm. which sends Alonzo into a panic, and he's going to go to LAX and get the hell out of here. Mm-hmm. That's basically that's basically the only play he's got left is yep. he's got to skip town before the Russians find him. Correct. Spoiler alert, they find him. They find him. <laughs> and he gets torn up. In the most rushed ending ever. Right. It because just, it's just like, did he not see... Like, I get it, he saw the chick lighting the cigarette in the van. Right. But did he not see the Hummer that was right. parked right the fuck to his right? Well, and that's why I think that having the neighborhood kill him would have been better. It would have, but it wouldn't have made any sense. Right. For the story. Uh, right. I just, maybe it's because, because the Because Russian... the story was building to the Russians. Right. But the Russians come from out of space, they kill him, and they leave. And then, and then you know, after this very long day at work... <laughs> uh, this was, this see okay, this is the part of it. I wish they had flipped the beginning scene with the ending scene. Right. So it's like, a- I wish I had seen Jake Hoyt after this fucking first day on the job. Right. Walking into his wife and being like, and she'll be like, "How was your first day, honey?" Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then beating the tar out of her. Jesus, why? That's no. because I, I feel that's how he would have ended. That's this. a I, left. That's a left turn. That's a. Yeah. I mean, the alternate ending. There, there was an alternate ending with uh, the three wise men actually showing up behind Jake at his house. Oh, okay. And asking for the money. Okay. And Jake saying that he checked it into evidence, which never happened. Yeah. Weird. But I never saw that. Alternate I still, ending. I still would have rather see Jake walk in and have his wife greet him. Because he was so happy leaving. Right. Oh, yeah. He was so happy, and this is so different. And so then- It was so, I got my brand new Celtics jacket on the first day of school. Right. Yeah, it's right. going to be great. Right. And then you come home, and you're bloodied, and you're battered. You almost got murdered. You smoked fucking dust. Yeah. And you've murdered people. Um, yeah, and then, you know- <laughs> You we... shot a guy in the ass. Yeah, and then we find out that Alonzo is, you know, basically, they're like, oh, look at this crooked cop. And so, and that's how the movie just ends. It is, but it ends very appropriately. Yeah, I, I feel because well, it, also, just... it also for it also calls back to when they were murdering Roger, right? And he said, you know, he he recited that, you know, an L.A. police detective was murdered today. He survived by his wife. Oh, and yeah, mom. and you hear that in the the news, news report. You know, an L.A. detective was, was murdered, murdered today. today. Yeah. Right, and it's very very similar to it. Um. Some fun facts about about Training Day. <laughs> Toby Maguire oh. was originally selected to play Jake Hoyt. Yeah, w- it wouldn't have been as good. He went so far as to lose a shitload of weight and go on a lot of undercover narcotics runs. Oh, weird. Um, let me see. He was then murdered, and those police officers had to become Mounties in Canada. Yeah, exactly. It wouldn't have been as good. No. Um, let me see. There was original, let me see the director that was there. Um, I do know that, uh, originally cat. Oh, there it is. Uh, David Guggenheim was originally set to direct. Okay. And originally as Lonjo Harris was Samuel L. Jackson. Okay. Jake Hoyt. Matt Damon. Oh, that wouldn't have been terrible. Damon and Jackson. I feel that Samuel L. Jackson has been playing his character his whole career. Yeah, it would have been a parody a, of this character. Yeah, it would have been a very different movie. It wouldn't have won an Academy Award. No, it would have been a. It would have been fun. We would have enjoyed it, but it wouldn't have been as good. Also, another choice uh, that was heavily in the running to play Jake Hoyt before Ethan Hawke signed on, Marshall Mathers. Oh, weird, Mister Eminem himself. Oh, that the, I didn't like Eight Mile, so I don't know how I feel about that. I, I it's always it's it's a fifty fifty thing. I think he would have had to bulk up. Yeah, he would have. Because, but just to see Eminem, he would have been better than Dr. Dre. Jesus, yeah, that would have been a better role. He would have been better for as Dr. Dre. But to see him take a bunch of shit from Denzel Washington for two hours, I think I could have. I yeah, think I could have done that. 
Yeah. Again, wouldn't have been as good a movie. Wouldn't have been as I, I don't see him getting a supporting actor nod. No. No. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Again, a, a lot of uh, a lot of police were technical advisors. A lot of yeah. uh, Bloods and Crips were technical advisors. Uh, as you do on this. I, I mean, again, as you do. Um, let me see what the picture is. Uh... Oh, so yeah, yeah. Okay. Speaking speaking of ricochet. Uh, there's there's a picture of a young detective Alonzo Harris that was uh, taken from the movie Ricochet. Ricochet. Okay. Have you seen Ricochet? No. It's quality schlock. Okay. John Lithgow uh, basically sure. roofies Denzel Washington, and he's he's playing a guy who's going to be a politician. Weird. And and he makes him like have sex with a dirty hooker. Ice tea's in it. It's okay. Wonderful. Sure. 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 Christian Bale was offered the role of Jake Hoyt. Okay, that would have been better. You know? Uh, th- so there was a lot of guys that got there before him. Uh, the word fuck was used 211 times. Yeah. In in training day. Um, okay. Gary Sneese and Tom Sizemore also, yeah. along with Bruce Willis, offered the role of Alonzo. Okay. So, it, I, you know... There's a, there's, it's, it was one of those movies that went through a lot of ebbs and flows, but I feel... They landed on the right one. Ultimately... The right director, yeah. The right actors, obviously the right writer, right. It it really it all just came together in right. one of the more iconic movies of this generation. Absolutely, Training Day. Uh, that's Training Day. That is Training Day coming up next week. All of the Jurassic Parks, <sighs> all of them. Christ, all of them. Hey, do, would you rather do? We're going to be focused too. No, we're going to be focusing on the first Jurassic what about Park. Pixels, but we've all agreed to watch all of them, all of them up till the current one. Right, Bill and I might go see it. We'll see. You we'll might see go happens. see it. Okay. Uh, so we will be focusing on the very first Jurassic Park, but we will all watch two, three, and Jurassic World just to have those references in the pocket. Absolutely. Uh, also. Share this episode of That Movie Show on any form of social media. Tag any one of us, Mike Went, Liam NEI, Bill Neville NEI, New Age Pop, New Age Insiders. But as long as you're sharing a copy of this, whether it's on audio, video, Facebook, YouTube, it doesn't fucking matter. We will select a winner of the training day DVD. We're going into the mediocre prize closet for you guys. Yeah. There you go. And we will see you next week as we enter Jurassic Park. Bye bye. Welcome.